name be exalted. Have your way this morning. Speak to your people to understand. Bestow to them a seed of life. That after this raise on earth, it shall be heaven at last. Thank you, our Father, for you this morning. I pray for you hearing the sound of my voice. My God will bless you. Whatever he has deposited for you, no enemy will terminate it. And it shall be well with you. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. I want you to sit down. Glorious sitting down. Nara, 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 Consecration program 2019. Can somebody celebrate God? Put your hands together for this Jesus. Put your hands together for Him. Celebrate Him. Celebrate Him. Celebrate Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Last year, some of us were in this particular branch, and when we did the blessings of marriage, the consecration, family, the consecration, and you are alive to witness us again this year, and I said, to God be the glory. For the Lord giving you and your family life, no soul we are lost. Put your hands together again one more time for this God. Celebrate Him. Celebrate Him. You, you can celebrate Him better. You can celebrate Him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen, church? Hallelujah. This year's marriage reconsecration program is coming with a beautiful title and don't mind me i'm going to talk a little hard today and i understand and i know that by true god's revelation the lord will open your eyes to understand very much well about marriage the lord will open your eyes even the singles to understand the mystery behind what marriage is all about and what family is meant for and this morning This morning, I want to preach on a topic I titled True Love. Somebody say True Love. I can't hear you. Somebody say True Love. Somebody say True Love. Amen. Can I pray for a believer? If there has not been a true love in your marriage, 
If there has not been a true love in your family, I speak from this altar as a priest. I speak from this altar as a son of the prophet. And I prophesy every love that has been lost in your marriage and family shall be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, when I pray for people, I was praying for some of our uh, members in our branch in the U.S. And some of them, when you pray for them, what they discuss more is all about family that are, uh, 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 family that have issues of, you know, distance relationship, issues of not being together, issues of not loving themselves together. And a lot of families are going through the same problem. That there are no love in their families. But I want to pray to you today. And I'm going to use myself as a point of contact. Because in my wholesome family, the Lord has bestowed love to us. I speak to your family. Put your immediate family, your extended family. Love shall be restored in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear you. I said love shall be restored in the name of Jesus. I said, love shall be restored in the name of Jesus. Now, before we proceed, let's go through this scripture. That is, uh, uh, everybody knows this scripture, John 3, 16. Let's go through this scripture, John 3, 16. Let's understand the first of all, the foundation of love. The manifestation of love and what love could do, what it could be. How it can relent to us. So we can move on. John 3, 16, and I read. Yes. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world. Now, I want you to understand this. The Bible says, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish. Should not perish. But have everlasting But have what? Everlasting, everlasting life. life. Take it one more time. It's a popular scripture everybody knows. But I want to lay foundation to it. Let me hear you again. John 3, 16. <laughs> For God so loved the now, world. Now hear this. For God himself so much loved this world. That he gave his only begotten son. Now he decided because of the love he has for you and I. Sent a son. The Bible didn't say he sent only. The Bible said he sent only begotten son. Now whosoever believeth. That now whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not perish but, have but have what everlasting life. Now understand this analysis. The Bible said, for God's soul of the world, He gave His only. Somebody say only. I don't know how many of you that can give only thing you have. Now, if God could lay a foundation of love by giving only, now if he has given only, what God has done is to do what? Is to do what? Sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. You know, when you want to talk about sacrifice, sacrifice is when you give something that pains you so much. When something that, you know, it's, it's the only thing you have, you, you, you give it up. I, I was listening to, uh, I think, is it Frank Edward? I was listening to one of his testimony this morning. And he was talking about the first time they gave him one million from his album. His mother was poor. His mother said, go and use it and sow a fresh fruit. And he was like, mother, what are you talking about? I will I? You don't even have one cup. I don't have. First one million. He said, go and give it. He said, I couldn't disrespect my mother. I went and gave the one million. He said, suddenly... The pastor of his church started calling him and somebody was looking for him. When he got there, the person blessed him with a seed of $10,000. He said, how will you give me a seed of $10,000? I didn't sing for you. I didn't do anything for you. Suddenly, his phone rang again. And somebody said, where are you living? He told me, I'm living in uh, Edikage or whatever. He said, no, that place is fine. Said, Why can't you live in Vigis? He said, madam, I don't have that money. He said, one morning, he woke up, he saw a, a, a truck or whatever that came to ask him, what will you pick from this house? You know, when I was listening to it, I now remember the testimony of my own personal life. That was how somebody went and built a house, furnished it, and gave him the key. Somebody says sacrifice. I can't hear you. Somebody says sacrifice. Now, Jesus gave his only, only thing. God gave his only thing, Jesus. Sacrifice. I 
And the foundation of marriage is an institution led by expression of the body of Christ. Now I now discover that what true love is, is what? Is what? Sacrifice. True love is what? Sacrifice. My brother, no marriage can succeed without a sacrifice. And I want to make it crystally clear that the sacrifice that exists in marriage and family is a sacrifice that do not come from one side. If sacrifice is one-sided, the family and the marriage do not succeed. Sacrifice comes from husband and it comes from one. Why? And that's why... Let me tell you what is love. What love does is this. Love rebukes. Somebody say love rebukes. I can't hear you. One, love does what? Two, love sustains. Somebody say love sustains. Three, love endures. Somebody say love endures. Four, love lives forever. Somebody say love lives forever. When you are in love with someone, you will always have the spirit to rebuke him or her when he is doing things that are not godly and things that are out of the way. That is love. When you love somebody, you will always want to sustain what both of you shares as husband and wife. You will never allow the third party to come into whatever both of you shares. If you love somebody, you will always want to endure at a critical situation you endure. A lot of marriages today, the level of our doctoral stories in marriages today, when you go through those histories of marriage, you will then understand it is because a lot cannot endure the situation present. They have no option to go and look for another man to sleep with. They have no option to go and look for another woman to sleep with and make sure they make money from it. And they say love lives forever. Anybody you love, you will always want to be with forever. Till death do you. But there is a problem in the land. That the marriage that are going on in the land today are such that people do no longer. Do you know sometimes people will call me on phone? Most especially my own direct prayer line is, is a line that sometimes when the phone starts ringing, I will say, My mind has this phone started ringing. That is how busy it could become. Now, do you know that major of the people that calls have issues of marriage? And when you pick it, the first question you will hear is, pray to confirm if my husband or my wife is my husband. Hi! Basically, when you don't marry, finish. You now want better. What did I go confirm? What did I go confirm? Hi! And let me tell somebody, there, there is something, take me to, to the book of Proverbs, let me show you something. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Take me to, I think, Proverbs 20, 18, 22. I don't know if it's correct, Proverbs 18, 22. Proverbs 18, 22 says, yes. mm -hmm. Whoso findeth a wife, Whosoever that findeth a wife, Findeth a good thing. Findeth what? A good thing. Now, God has bestowed to a man for you to go and do what? Are you to go and do what? Go and find, brother. Go and find. <laughs> now, do you know why a lot of people make mistakes in their marriage? You did not even find. You have not even located. The next thing you will do for you to start praying, ask God if this is my wife. Let me tell you. Have you noticed a story? That majority of men of God, their marriages are not working. Hello? Are you aware of that? I don't want to mention them by name. If 
Our purpose in the ministry are 10. Eight, their marriage is not working. Can I tell you what the problem is? Do you know what the problem is? When they wanted to marry, some of them will tell you that God told me that this sister Juliana is my wife. I have discovered that God don't tell them anything. Hello? He cannot lie to me. He cannot lie. Lion of the tribe of Judah. He cannot lie to me. God don't tell them When I wanted to get married, something happened. You know, your pap is a fine boy. Whether you agree or not agree, me, I don't look me as he's fine. fine. No joke. You're laughing. Now, hear this. I discovered that time. You know, I'm supposed to be the one, according to what the Bible says, I'm supposed to be the one finding. Is that correct? I should find. My bone of bone. Eh? 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 But that but time they were uh, finding me. <laughs> now, yeah, let me say something. Yeah, Hallelujah, church. Yeah, sure. yeah, we are here yeah, to discuss yeah, marriage. marriage. Now, 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 a time now, came now, that even now, some now, of my now, workers now, in that branch, that was Kilo branch, branch, in that branch, branch, branch we come we and come give and me give prophecy, prophecy that God did. Now, now, like this. this. When they give me the prophet, I said, I can't tell you. Say yes. I can't, can't tell you. Say yes. Laugh my mind. Then I your malaria tell you. Let me go tell you. I had opportunity. They will tell you, we can get you this. We can get you this car. We can get you this house. But there was a lady on my mind at that time. It was not my wife. This my present wife now knows who the lady is. Met her. But because I was not ready to go too spiritual during the marriage. Let me tell you, marriage is not spiritual. Hello? I have discovered that a lot of people that go too spiritual in marriage always make what? Beauty is not the physical thing you see. Beauty is the character in a woman. And let me tell you something. I decided I needed to search and locate a wife. Then, the lady then, I love, I believe, I wanted to marry. Something was going on. I noticed that sometimes when she drops her phone, I'm a jealous lover. If I want to pick the phone, she will first of all grab her phone and say, Then I will be Then, people were giving me prophecies because I have said I want to marry. And in my ministry then, I caused a very big wahala. We were recording at the day of service in that branch about 3,000 something in the service. A time came, I said, I have found who I want to marry. And in the two next vigil, I will present it. That day I said, I want to present who I want to marry. There was no space. Both up, both outside. Because 60% in the ministry then was single. That is. The day my wife was confessing to me, he said, I didn't have leg. When you say now, you say, sweetheart, make I show who I want marry. Everybody. Even all the, all the prophecy, you know, normally, if you come to service and if I want to preach, people will just be shouting prophesy. There's nothing else we do than to prophesy. We don't even preach. There's no time for that. So, but on that day, people were not shouting prophesy. They were waiting for the time of who be that person. You did there. You was there like. <laughs> Everybody was waiting. That time prophecy came. One of my pastors came. When he discovered who I have decided, one of my pastors came to me. He said, Daddy, how could it be 
there is this one men have used and dumped. The same pastor of mine went and told the other one that I was together with believing that I will marry. Not, I'm not living with her as in somebody I was cutting. That's the one with the phone. If I want to, she will. I say, Wahala deal. Went and told that one that is like I'm searching for something else somewhere. And went and told this one that I have somebody somewhere. I'm caught. Then, then came and told, told me, me that my pastor, 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 pastor that the that person I found, I found looks like somebody where they don't use them. He went, he told me, told this lady and told this one. And I knelt down. I asked God, show me among these two who is my wife. I was, I was caught, caught up in the realm. And I was matching with somebody with a wedding gown. Immediately her veil was unveiled. It was this my wife. I said, okay, God. I said, no, say. Now marriage and money is what Satan normally uses to bring that. I said, God, if not me, if sorry, if not true, this is a true revelation. Go and show another person the same thing. He went, went, went and showed one of another of my pastors that I have a lot of pastors. And that one now said, because that one knows everything. That one now shared his own dream. I said, okay. He'd be like saying that this one. That time, I now started looking for character. What I did for marriage, if I say, some of you will say fear, but what kind of person is this? I'll go and buy a new line, put it in another phone, construct a love text that has sex story and send to my wife. My wife to be that time we are not married. And I will invite her. I said, please, can I see you for a minute? He said, daddy, yes. By then, I've not told her I love her. I've not told her I want to marry her. I've not told her I want to date her. You know, you know that kind of thing. But this daddy love, sometimes I will call. And you know, when daddy began to call you too much, interest done the coming side. Now, I, I want to say something. I, I know why I'm bringing up all these stories. Because a lot of marriages today are not working because of your choice. You didn't identify who the person is. You just went into marriage because of what your eye behold. Now, when I send that test, she will read it. After reading it, she doesn't know who sent it. She will literally come visit with that thing. I'll say, let me see your phone. She will faithfully drop it. I will purposely go directly to that test. You say, Kai, you need to give your life to Christ. <laughs> you need to repent kind of life are you living? Look at what somebody telling you that you were so sweet the last time both of you met and all that. She will say that even God in heaven knows that he doesn't know who sent that test. He said, call the number. The last time she, I asked her call the number, she said she called the number. Before I, the second one I did, which was so frustrating, her mother was one of my workers in the church. But the daughter was in Imo State at the high institution. The mother never knew I met the daughter. I went to the house to pray for the family as a worker. I don't even, I've never met the daughter. I saw a calendar where my wife's picture was. And they drew all this soap advertisement. I look at the picture and I said to the man, ah, this one looks like my wife. I didn't know that was her daughter. And I didn't know that was this my wife. Now the last one I did that was so frustrating. I called her phone. I booked a ticket to visit her in school to know how she's doing. You know what I did? I went to her family house and I, I, I visited the father and the mother. The father is in the church now. He's hearing me. I went there. When I got there, 
I called her. I said, I'm in your house. He said, no, no. I said, speak to your mom. She spoke to her mom. So she was not expecting me to drive for their, their house in Lagos where I'm living in Lagos. I took off from there. I got my driver. I went straightly to the airport. So with my acting, she believed I was in Lagos without knowing that in the next for five minutes, I'll be in over the airport. I now began to talk things that had to do with, you know, you know, something you will speak to a woman, she began to feel unworthily. The way I took, the way I find my wife, I went so many ways. Home. And at the end of the day, I thought I would not meet her at arrival in her hostel. I thought by now, you know, she don't come out. When I reached there, she still there. I said, which kind of girl be this else? For all this thing. And I want to tell you that this is 212 now is how many years? Seven years. Peaceful marriage. I can travel and sleep there. Somebody tested on social media. He said, Can you leave your phone with your spouse? I said, Hey, spouse. I said, Hey. He said, I don't hide anything from my wife. She don't hide anything from me. Sometimes she will seize my phone, I will seize her phone. I want to tell you the comfort and the relax and, and the belief. Marriages today is not working because a lot became too much spiritual. There's one person I said, he said she's a prophetess, that God told her. A husband is a man of God and that man of God is in the mountain waiting for him. And when they got there, both of them actually met on the mountain. But if we hear the story of that marriage, if he dresses to go to church, the wife will wait at the door. What I demanded yesterday, they didn't give me. He go, he slap him. Boah! They will start fighting. After fighting, they will tear the suit. He go change another one. He go come out. He go call for phone. The, the lady just beat me up this morning. No? And now, tell me what he going to talk for altar when he gets to the altar. We are not saying that it is wrong for you to pray for God's direction. But for the Bible to say, he that find it. That means the Lord has bestowed a wisdom and a criteria in you that can make you discover who is supposed to be your wife and your husband. Brother, you know the kind of weak point you can uphold. If they tell you your wife is lazy, you say, yes, I can manage it. They tell you your wife sleeps outside anyhow. Some people will say yes. Some people will say no. So you know the kind of things you can manage in a marriage. Nobody is perfect because of that. The, if you can manage the imperfection you see, that is why in our church, we approve courtship, but not courtship and you'll be sleeping with the person. No. But we are proof because you know the person you want to marry. Know who he is. Know who she is. A lot of marriage today are not working because of deceit. You know, when you marry somebody out of deceit, you can divorce the person. I was watching the confession of Prophet Igilla. And he said, my wife slept out and got pregnant. Then I decided to equally sleep out and pregnant a woman church marriage is an institution it's not a baby's business that is why when you come for a counseling for marriage i will ask you brother are you ready sister are you ready marriage is not something you just rush in you must have this endurance and patience. You must have this tolerance. And you must make a sacrifice. If you do not sacrifice, your marriage cannot work. Let me tell you something. Marriage has so much to do with understanding. Take me to Colossians chapter 3, 19. Marriage has something to do with understanding. Somebody say understanding. Hallelujah, church. 
Can I prophesy to the single here? When you are about to marry, the Lord shall direct your footsteps. Colossians 3.19 says, Yes. Husband, love your wives and be not bitter again. Now hear this. It says, Husband, do what? Love your wife. Love your wife and do not be what? Bitter against them. You know, sometimes that a lot of husbands today, their husband bitter. Anything your wife does, your reply is what? Is what? Beating. Your reply is to assault her. Your wife is the bone of your bone that the Bible has ordered you the word of God has given you a foundation that you must love your wife. Love him very much well. Love him very much well. Sorry. And a lot of people claim to love their wife, but any single mistake of their wife, they will trash it on the beer parlor with their friends. What kind of husband are you? They will trash it in their ministry meetings. What kind of husband are you? May the Lord give you wisdom to be the man of the house. Take me to Proverbs 5.18. Proverbs 5, chapter 18. Let thy foundation be blessed. Let thy fountain, fountain. be blessed. Uh -huh. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Rejoice with the wife of your youth. Do you know today that a lot of men, the business they do, when God makes them to succeed, they don't rejoice with the wife of their youth. They don't know. Their wife don't even know what they do. Some people will not have a plan in their heart. I don't need to tell my wife. If you tell my wife, he's going to give it to his brother, his sister. He's going to give it to his mother, his father, and all that, this, this, and that. Let me tell you. In my family, in my life, my parents understand that I love them so much, but that I'm building an immediate family. Amen, church? Now, when I married my wife, she had her own account. So immediately she now came to my life and stopped answering the father's name and began to answer my name. I equally went and opened her own account. So we got there and said, open this account for yourself. She did. Then after opening, I demanded they open a corporate account that will answer Mr. and Mrs. Stephen. That account was opened as a current account. Then I have my account. Then I have my business, uh, uh, current account. Now what I do is, whenever major finances are coming, that run into millions, I make sure it goes through that Mr. And Mrs. account and she goes to withdraw that money and sign the church. Now let me tell you things about marriage. When you make woman feel she's in charge, she will be loyal, loyal to, you. to you. Hello. Hello. When you when make you woman, woman feel she's in charge. You know, women are very easy to control. Very easy. If you know the secret, you can hold your wife like, hold, it, hold, hold her ransom. Like as if you have kidnapped another person's daughter. Amen, church. Now, and that has now brought sense into the marriage that Anything you want to withdraw and transfer, somebody will know. And when that person knows, then you will not want to transfer what you cannot defend. Then in our own personal account, we have money that goes in there. She has money that goes into her own account monthly. And whatever she wants to use it for, I don't care. But I make sure that she is relaxed with that. When she came in, I think I had only a car when I got married to her. Immediately she came in, I bought another car and gave her the car and dashed out to the one I was riding and started riding keke. If I want to go to church, I will enter keke. She would say, carry this car. I said, no, you will carry it and go out. It didn't take time. Another extra three or four cars came in. It, was, it became six cars. Then I dashed out extra two, sold one and kept one and kept only two. 
I shall be dash car if God give me. Now, let me say something. And at every time, your wife keeps feeling comfortable. Let me tell you. Anointing has nothing to do in your marriage. Can I say something again? I say anointing. You just like your husband went out to do something. And when the man is back, the, your food, the, his food is supposed to be ready. And you now tell him that your pastor gave you six to six pastors. That you didn't want to hear the order of the food. Kai. Even God not going to hear that prayer. I say even God not going to do it. Not going to hear the prayer. Now, that's why That's why in a marriage, the decision of the husband supersedes the decision of your pastor. Hello, church. Hello, church. That is why a lot of pastors, a lot of churches do not ordain a woman a pastor. In as much as it is biblical, Jesus never did it in the Old Testament, it didn't happen. So, but there are some churches that ordain women a pastor. So, we don't talk about that. Doctrines are different. But the one of the reasons why pastors do not ordain some women pastors is because of such. Because your pastor, the senior pastor will come and say, Hey, sister, you're going to Iber State to preach tomorrow. When you get home and tell daddy, uh, my pastor said I will go to Iber State tomorrow. He says, So, so if me is going to Iber for business, you leave the my friend. If you step out of that, I will slap you. And at that time, when you obey your pastor and disobey your husband, it is a sin before God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, let's talk about sex. Now, hear this. If you're a married woman and a married man, Every time when your wife or your husband needs you in the bed, you began to tell them you are fasting. God no will answer that your prayer. The Bible said that women should be at a subjection every time. Subject yourself 100% to your who? To your husband. That's why when you look at a man, a man was created and have this nature that every man wants sex almost every time. When you look at a man and his nature, women have a time of their cramps, which is the time of their menstruation, their period and all that, which you need to give them a space. But when you look at a man, a man is always ready to sleep with the wife at every given time. Now, when, when you look at a man and the kind of a man nature a man has, when a woman comes to touch a man, even if that man is sleeping, and you touch the body of that man, that body is eligible to rise at any given time. That's why when a woman is wearing a half-naked cloth, when a man looks at you, the first thing that comes in the mind of that man is what? Sex. When a man is sitting and a woman began to touch you, or touch you at the back and romance you, first thing that comes on the head of that man is what? Sex. And that is why it is very wrong for a wife to deny a husband's sex. And it is very wrong for a wife to use her body to give a man condition of sex. A lot of you will allow your husband to sleep with them only when your husband has done what you want them to do. Daddy, I told you to change my phone in the night. Leave me alone now. Ah, what is all this? Sweden, I'm feeling you. Feeling what? Leave me alone. The phone I told you to do, bye. Bye. You know the punishment, what did he pay for? You know what he paid for? Him? Everything that concerned you, he paid for it. It's not a laughing matter. It's a very disturbing story. And that's why 
in a marriage, the sex you have is a holy sex. So it is very wrong for a wife to give a man a condition, your husband a condition, before your husband will sleep with you. It's a sin. It's a sin before the law. When a man comes back, he wants to touch you, you said, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so weak. The second day you are so weak. The third day you are so weak. And this man began to grunt in his heart. You are weak every time. Every time you are weak. My sister, stand up, go and wash your face. Go and drink one cup of water. You will get strength. Come back to that bed and do what you are asked to do. You are weak, 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 weak. You are weak. Men go buy antibiotic. You give you injection so that you can get strength. Make sure you don't frustrate your marriage because of sex. Lack of sex. Attend to your husband anytime. Attend to your wife anytime. Be strength enough to make sure that this marriage works. Another one. Somebody came to my office one day. He said, Daddy, I'm tired of this marriage. I said, what happened? He said, Daddy, I don't know how to say it. I said, Madam, say it, say it. You have, are you not here for counsel? He said, say it. He said, Daddy, I don't know. I say, say it now. He said, my, my husband, my husband thing, uh, it's too small. Oh! It's not a laughing matter. I said, Madam, did both of you cut? He said, Yes. You didn't ask him some question. He's supposed to know him. I'm not saying he's supposed to sleep with him. But there are things he's supposed to tell you. He said, that the, When I said too small, eh, Kai, you won't understand. Too over small. Don't worry. Now, if that man never told her the condition of his life and allowed them to get married, that is a deceit in the part of who? In the part of who? The man. Open up, tell them the truth. Tell them I have this affliction. Tell them I have this sickness. I have one of my former pastors before. That is as asthmatic. When he wanted to get married to a lady, and I said, Have you told this lady that you are asthmatic? He said, No, daddy, that would not be something we discuss. If not, he might decide not to go. I said, No, no, no. Tell them everything that consigned to you so that you don't marry out of the sick. It's going to be so bad that after getting married, you began to discover what that if you have discovered at the early stage, you will not accept to marry. Look at our singles today. A lot of singles today are not married because of your style of life. Let me shock you. If you're a single lady here, hearing the son of my voice, whenever you go to the mirror and dress very well, like the thing you think is well. Uh, uh, no, this one not be cut. This one, uh, uh, lipstick. You not do it like this. You know, you know, I get a lot of ladies in my house. So when you do it like this, they not do it like this. After they do, they now bring Tirio. Is it Tirio? Tirio, right? Okay, eye pencil. They now bring eye pencil. After making the eye pencil, they now paint. After they paint, they now wear sleeveless. And take it, their chest is opening so their boobs can come out. They now check their skirt, mini skirt. Let me tell you, after that person, whenever a young man sees you, he will begin to come after you. Now, coming after you is coming after you is because the, the, the system of the man has reason that everything that runs through his mind is to do what? Sleep with you, not to marry you. So, when he collects your number and begins to tell you how much he loves you by test, how much he can die for you, now lie, now lie, now lie, now lie. He will only do what? He will only do what? 
sleep with you. After sleeping with you, he will now begin to look for a woman that wears a gown that at least cover the nail or reach the nail. He will now look for one that do not expose, that always whenever you see her, she is so decent. And whenever he wants to marry, he will look for that one. Whenever he wants to sleep with somebody, he will look for you. And whenever you go to your pastor, daddy pray for me. This guy loves me so much. Brother, sister, Nala, he not love you, he not love you. Where did they look for another nakedness where they show another? You know where anything. How you gonna walk out? Your skirt is not even rich here. Everything he breezes. I was driving the other day. I saw one lady that was wearing one gown, but the gown reached here. So immediately priest started flowing. She was doing like this. I nearly wind down and say, small thing, I nearly wind down. I would have said, sister, why are you pushing it down? Leave her, leave her, leave her. Let me wear that. What do they hold up for? You leave your house naked. Now you reach. As God, the wind God produced began to blow. You began to hold up. And any man that comes at that time, because let me tell you, watch something. No matter man has this kind of system that pushes them to sleep with someone at any given time. Now, hear this. No matter who that person is, whether even a man of God, when a lady passes you and now a lady is half naked, the person must turn and do it. And look. There are some people, their makeup can kill you. They will put the, they will go and first of all, use viral, um, razor. Come on this one. When they come out and finish, they say, God, this one where you put, no, you know, fine. They will not bring high pressure. They no go, follow them as God, do them. They will come down, reach here, come down here. Reach here, come down here. Come put one for front. Come do the picking. As they are coming, whenever I see, I say, ah, map of Nigeria. Which way that one they show us go? More go in most states, I'll be in Lagos states. And at the end of the day, when you're getting to 30 to 40, you now decide to stop something. Ah, sister, why you stop? Ah, the church, why they go now? They know they, they know they, they, they know they paint. They know they, 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 they even do makeup. In fact, if you don't cover your hair, you are in, you are in, when a big soup. Ah, sister, at what age? When you are the peak of 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, even till 30, ha. If they want you know where this is saying a lot. Let me tell you. The beauty of every woman is that that is, is inside. No matter how fine girl where you marry. Immediately she bought first one, second one, third one. You go see that she done the change. She come the fat. Her cheek done the come out. In eye done the intense inside. You can't look at me. You say, this thing no be Veronica that time. Bro. But if there is a good attitude, you are so comfortable to come back home at any given I said, my wife, don't worry. Bomb finish. Immediately you bomb finish now. You're going to follow me travel. Relax your mind. Don't worry. I'm not going to go here. Look. Now, let me tell you. The reason of the joy is one thing. Search. As you search, you pray. Don't go send an angel to search for you because God might decide to give you somebody who is holy and immediately she appear. Her leg, they like this. As she they come, you say, God, send her. Very love. As she enter, Bram, you open up. Ah, the Lord, thank you for sending. As you they talk, and the Lord, thank you for sending. You now see her leg. You say, God, thank you for 
bringing her for me to pray for her. Now lie. But when you go and find, and tell God I love the character, is there anything that could make me lie to separate with this lady? Revelation can come. The way you present your case matters. That is why a lot of people don't know how to pray. How to present cases they don't know. Instead of you to present case, you began to complain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Can I prophesy to you? For those that are single, you will locate the bone of your bone. You will not make a mistake. Oh. And that's why, take me to Ephesians chapter 5. I want to be rounding up Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 to 25. Somebody else, take me to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. That's the reason why once in a year we bless families, bring them and pray that God by his mercy. That God by his mercy will restore all those families with longer love, good health, peace, happiness. And for those who are expecting to stop it, the Lord will do something new in their life. Amen. And I hear you say amen. If you want marry this year, say amen. Okay, let me hear you. Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. Now, there is a problem on the land. You know, I've been opportunity to travel to the Western world. I've traveled to so many countries. And I've discovered that the marriage in that place, that women assumes to be the head instead of the man. Even if they want pursue, now the man will leave house, nobody will to leave house. The constitution favors them that much. I was talking to one Nigerian lady and the other lady was from Cameroon. And I said, why are you people in abroad? Why have you changed from being an African woman? The way you respond to a man, the way you do this, the way you do that. Now, you are now the head, not even the husband. And they were looking at me. I said, the man is your head. So you take instruction from your head. We forbid women that turns women to a slave. We forbid that. But women in the Western world has taken it as, as even in Africa. Now it's coming in, in Africa. Some women now in Africa, even when they want to leave the house, their husband didn't know where they would not know where they're going to. They would just stand up, pick the car key. Ah, where is your mother now? She says she wants to get something. There. Get something where. There's no longer fear. Everybody wants to. Everybody just wants to. Go ahead, sir. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Even as Christ is the head of the church. That is how marriage is supposed to be. Allow your husband to rule over you. Let your decision not supersede your husband's decision. It's a sin before God. And it's a punishable sin. Go ahead, sir. And he is the savior of the body. Because your husband is the savior of your own body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, as the church is subject unto Jesus Christ, so let the wives, let the wives be to their own husband be in to everything. Their own husband in what? Everything. In some things. Huh? In everything. In, in, in every. In everything. In everything. In everything. Madam, in everything. Did they hear? Madam, I say in everything. Verse twenty-five. Husbands. Let me tell you. When I wanted to get married. Jewelries doesn't move me. When you wear jewelries everywhere, I know they're too comfortable. And the person I wanted to marry wear jewelries everywhere. Both ear, neck. And the church I came from, in that church, women know they wear jewelry.
And I said, I will not want you to be wearing this, but I will not want you to do it out of the fear of a husband so that it will be a true reflection and repentance from your heart. The day she threw away and gave out all her earring, all her necklace and all that, was the day she told me that she woke up and she discovered that she looks more beautiful when she looks at the mirror than whenever she now puts on the jewelry. And since when she know they wear the thing, she can't define more and more for my eye. Anytime I look up, she define. Right. I go just the, in fact, if she pass, I go just the sing for my heart. Fine, fine thing Jesus they do for me. I would never. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, church. Can I pray for your marriage? That thing you desire, the Lord will give it to you. Amen. And when he gives it to you, it will uphold it with peace, love, happiness, joy, growth, success. You know, the Bible says, he that find it, you find it what? Then you will obtain what? Favor. May the favor of marriage bestowed through God come upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Husband, love your wife. He said, husband, do what? Love your wife. Love your wife. Not be wifey. Wife, your wife. You know, when God gives you a wife without giving you a knife, you should be happy. In my office, as a servant of God, I've been opportune to meet men that married what? Knife. A knife. Where they chuck them. When they close from office, they will not want to go home. They want to go somewhere they will take drink alcohol so that when they are arriving home, they will just go to bed. And sleep. And sleep. Can I pray for you? If you're a young man here, you want to get married. God will never give you a knife. Amen. I didn't hear you. God will never give you a knife. I said, God will never give you a knife. God shall give you a wife. And you shall celebrate that wife in Jesus' name. He said, husband, love your wife. So if God has given you a wife, please love her. Love her, love her. Show every love. You know, as I was talking, if God has given you a wife, sister, if he now turn and look the husband, I know inside her heart, now you go say, this man, go and rejoice, so God has given me to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, church. And I pray for somebody, all the singles here, God will make a way. Your marriage will not be your fear. Amen. Or your marriage shall be thy celebration. Amen. Say amen here. That is why today married families are going to eat together with single brothers and sisters. That God who has put in celebration in the mouth of the married ones who put celebration in the mouth of the ones who are about to marry. And when we eat together, it's a sign of love. It's a sign of happiness. It's a sign of joy. And God will make joy to continue to be upon our family. And for you to be alive to eat together, you'll be alive to eat together again. It's a covenant. It's a covenant of life. Say amen. Amen. Say amen. Take me to the last scripture, please. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, you wives. Likewise, you wives. Be in subjection to your own husbands. Be in subjection to your what? Wife. He said you should do what? Be in subjection to your husband. It's not when you. When your husband say one, you will say two. There's some women that can knock. Kai. Your husband is talking. You don't even allow the man to talk. You will slap him with another talk. You won't give man a breathing space. A lot of women today has turned the heart of their children against their father. May God have mercy upon those kind of women. Amen. You're not supposed to turn. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. So, it is wrong for some kind of practice to be done both in the presence of the kids. Two, it is wrong for you as a woman to turn the heart of your children to your father. We've not paid school fees. You know your husband don't have that money at that time. You say, now your papa will wait for now. Such languages are not good. I pray for understanding and wisdom in marriages that God shall bestow it unto you that from this day, 
Those that marriage are not working, we began to walk. Those that won't own are walking shall be sustained by the Holy Ghost. And those expecting to get married, the Lord will direct their footsteps. You will not marry a knife, you will marry a wife. You will not marry any how man. You will marry a man the Lord has given a foundation to grow. Say better, amen. amen. Finally, in today's marriage single, if you are a single young man, you're not married, and you don't have anything much you're doing, look for job, you're lazy. Start something with anything token. You're, you know, there are some guys that I know, that I pray for. Some of them are millionaires today, not just because I pray, it's because I cancel them. My brother, why will you be waiting till when the business of 10 million comes? Every time you are running, looking for, I have one contract, the contract is 10 million, the contract is 20 million. And if you're a wife, who has located such man? Advise him that the little he has had, let him start it with something and continue looking for the contract of one billion. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me, church? So that you don't go and marry somebody who has no taproot. Hungry, go wire you and kill you. When a man passed with a Range Rover and that's your 100,000, you began to follow the man. May God never lead you to a man that has no vision. I say every young si uh, sister here, yes. may God never give you a man that has no vision. And let me pray for our viewers all over the world that are watching me live now. I want to say something. That if your marriage has been disturbing, I prophesy that by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that God by his mercy we restore peace in that marriage in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your marriage will not be a failure. God will restore it with peace, prosperity, and open doors for those believing God for the fruit of the womb. If that is only what is lacking in that marriage, I speak in the name of Jesus that God shall open thy womb and shall cause you to receive and conceive and have your own child in the name of Jesus. For all the single young men and women, I bless you and prophesy to you. From today, God will open a door of marriage. You will not just look at a man, but a man with vision and a man that shall love you. And I prophesy for all our single young men, God will give you a wife, not a knife. And at the end, the glory shall be to God and blessing shall be for you. I bless you all to the glory of God in Jesus' name. And I pray for the church, it shall be well with us. Everybody that has said amen, God will bless you. As everybody has said amen, God shall bless you. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Can I say something to you? Your marriage is blessed. Your future husband is blessed. Your future wife is blessed. In no distant time, they will look at you. No altar from father's house, mother's house will stop you. I see God celebrating you. Heaven is about to celebrate you. If you are a believer, say better amen. If you believe in celebrate Jesus, yeah, let me hear you.